Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with another Geography Now video. This will be like the basically the second episode of like territories, divisions, or whatever they're called. We, we just did the uh, United States, and now uh, I'm just going down the playlist. That's all I'm doing. And uh, India, you're up. Uh, I've done the uh, India Geography Now episode, so if you're from India and you haven't seen it, you should, you should definitely... Uh, Go, go to my uh, playlist on ge of geography now and check it out. Uh, you might actually see some other cool, might see some other cool playlist stuff that you might like, you know, because I've done a lot of wars. Uh, but anyways, yes, we're doing the states and territories of India explained from geography now. That's right. I just re I just uh, read the title. <laughs> um. Uh, like before, like last one I did the United States. You know, I'm Canadian. I live in the states, so. Pretty much, yeah, I kind of knew how things work, but this is definitely gonna be brand new to me. Like, you know, they went through real quick on the India Geography episode, which I probably, which I kind of forget 99% of what they told me. Uh, but so this will definitely be interesting and kind of new to me. So yeah, let's check it out. Do do, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Do, do, hold on one second. What year was this released? This was released. In, okay, this is three years old. Okay. Oh, because I remember like last episode, like the United States one, like the flag, like it was like Miss. Someone mentioned the Mississippi flag was different. So I'm sure, like you know, people in the comments below from India, you guys can let me know what's different. Uh, in this video that or some there's something that has changed since then you know because that, that happens right anyways three two one like and subscribe and bam. everybody before we start this video before we start this video we're going assassin. straight into a commercial Spy. and Danger. it's just a commercial so we're gonna hey everybody before we start this video is sponsored by a good sponsor that we found one that i actually believe in and personally endorse cetera it's a geography quiz game we'll get back to it later but first okay. as you guys know this is a filler week video and by popular request we are doing the states of india now the thing about india is that it's actually kind of broken up quite a few times since independence from the original 14 states mostly because of the people groups or the languages stuff like that so before we get into this just keep in mind i am not indian i so basically, like when the British left it, it they, when they divided everything, kind of like uh, it left it a mess, right? That kind of how it worked. Because <laughs> of the people groups or the languages, stuff like that. So before we get into this, just keep in mind, I am not Indian. I have never even been to India. So in order to make this video, I had to talk to a lot of you guys. You I read right. a lot of your emails and comments and I compiled as much information as I possibly could based off of what you guys the Indian jogger peeps have said so kind of you know if I get anything wrong it's you know kind of your fault so let's just jump into it the 29 <laughs> states and the seven union territories Andhra Pradesh the capital Amaravati now this is an interesting state because it kind of has like the fastest growing GDP in all of India over 16% in the past few years over here Ola. they speak Telugu and this guy wrote this play which is kind of considered like the most prominent Telugu play in all of Indian history otherwise they're famous for the Kuchipuri dance one of the eight classical styles of indian dance and uh yeah they have great beaches and caves arunachal pradesh capital itangar this is the region that's kind of disputed with china although it is administered by india in order to get in as a foreigner you will need a restricted area permit otherwise culturally it kind of takes cues from tibet you know the whole like buddhism thing going on there's quite okay. a few buddhists here people here are super friendly they're famous for their wood carvings and their carpets assam capital dispur now if you watch the india episode you'll know that i talked about the seven sisters in north East India. So, has there any, like, obviously, you guys seem like we said occupy it, but it's kind of disputed with China. Any conflicts there? I know there's, uh, I've said this in the, the Jarvan episode, there was some kind of, uh, there's one area, I forget what area is, there's kind of conflict sometimes with China. Is this that area or is, is this that, that different area? Because I don't think it's the same area. Because it, Looks like it's run by India, like you said, and see, everything seems to be going on great there. Anyways. 
Capital Dispur. Now, if you watch the India episode, you'll know that I talked about the seven sisters in Northeast India. Assam is kind of like the big sister. This place is known for disputably having the nicest tea and silk. And the silks are kind of made based off of what they actually feed the silkworms. It's interesting. They're also known for preserving the incredibly That's rare cool. one-horned Indian rhinoceros. And uh, the longest bridge opened up in 2017 over here as well. Assam. It's wow. awesome. Bihar. Capital Patna. This is kind of like the Buddha state. Lots of famous Famous sites for Buddhism. That's Supposedly huge. they have the Bodhi tree that Siddhartha Gautama sat under. Otherwise, on the Hindu side, I was told that they're very big on Ram and Krishna. I was also told that they're very hardworking people. Chhattisgarh, capital Naya Raipur. From what I was told, this is kind of like a somewhat militant-ish type of area. They're known for producing a lot of coal, and they are kind of one of the poorest states. And there is a noticeable community of people that kind of have Maoist slash Naxal ideologies, and it kind of why is it kind of like a mal malicious or military kind of area? I forget what you said. Uh, is there a lot, is there conflict going on there, or is this kind of like a home base for like you know that kind of thing? I don't know. Interesting. Community of people that kind of have Maoist slash Naxal ideologies, and it kind of clashes with the main Indian government. But otherwise, oh. generally the people here are just nice. But there's just a little bit of controversy. That's all. Go okay, on. Okay, this is you. the Vegas of India. It was a former Portuguese colony, and uh, now it's known for having a ton of Russian tourists that just flock over and take over everything. Great beaches, what? bars, and cool things happening. But the funny thing is, the people in Goa, like the actual citizens, are pretty chill and normal. It's just the tourists that give it the crazy vibe but yeah go on it's like where everybody wants to go to for a vacation but like for those i guess who live there uh um, i'm sure you guys probably don't mind the tourists being here i'm sure it brings a lot you know you know tourism brings in money right so you guys welcome it but then you guys probably like i don't know like like i live on the gulf coast and sometimes uh uh tourists can leave a lot of garbage and you know don't clean up after themselves kind of thing i'm sure it's probably the same there so you you don't mind them there you just want them to kind of clean after themselves and that kind of thing right it's is it the kind of same thing over there anyways the russians can party though of course that give it the crazy vibe but yeah go on it's like where cool. everybody wants to go to for a vacation you want to go uh to go uh yeah, yeah. Gujarat, capital of Gandhinagar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is from here. Now this place is famous for a few things. First of all, it's kind of like a desert and they have one of the largest salt deserts in the world. They have this forest, which has the last of the Asiatic lions in the world. Oh, I forgot, Gandhi was also from here. They are voted the number okay. one ease of business state in India. The people here are very oh. good at doing business and they're really good at trading. Also, no alcohol is allowed in this state, but that's okay wow. because they go to one of the union territories that we'll talk about later. But yeah, basically, okay. uh, people that can handle money really well come from Gujarat. Haryana. That's not bad though. I mean, it's just one state that doesn't allow alcohol. You guys can just go right next to the state. It's not like a whole country that doesn't allow alcohol. So, you know, it's probably a short drive, right? Or is, I don't know, the state is like like the size of a, of a normal, regular sized country. India is huge. So maybe it could be a far drive. It might be inconvenient, right? It might, or is it maybe just, you know what, public. You know, you just can't have alcohol in public kind of thing. People are hard to just drink it behind closed doors. I don't know. Talk about later. But yeah, basically, uh, people that can handle money really well come no drink. from Gujarat. Haryana, capital Chandigarh, which is shared with Punjab. Long story. Haryana, I was told, is kind of like the rougher, tougher brother of Punjab. It's known as like the wrestling and boxing capital of India. And they have one of the highest male to female sex ratios, like there's more men than women. And this place is famous okay. for having a lot of people that are hired to become bodyguards for other people in other states. Like this is the bodyguard state. Himachal Pradesh, which has two capitals, the summer one, Shimla, and the winter one, Dharamshala. This is kind of known as the state that hosts the Dalai Lama, but it's actually- uh, Back to the bodyguard thing, like, is, is that really a thing? Like, do people really need bodyguards? Uh, I don't know. Is it like, you need a bodyguard? Is, you know, is it just not safe in certain areas? I'm not sure. Or is it more of a joke? Yeah. 
Dharamshala. This is kind of known as the state that hosts the Dalai Lama. But it's actually kind of known as like the beautiful holiday destination that Indians love to visit. Nice. Known as the abode of snow, one of the snowiest places in all of India. Culture wise, again, they take a lot of cues from their Tibetan neighbors up north. But yeah, uh, cool state, lots of culture, lots of beautiful landscape. Uh, people like to visit for uh, vacations. Jammu and Kashmir also has two capitals. The summer one, Srinagar, and the winter one, Jammu. I have to be oh. very, very careful with this one. Why? because if you watch the India episode, you'll know that Pakistan and China and India are all kind of vying for ownership of this one area. Basically, the area that is kind of operated by India, we'll talk about. Besides Lakshadweep, it has the highest percentage of Muslims in all of India at about 68%. It used to be ruled under these princely states. And it's funny because like the people here are so nice and welcoming, even though they've gone through like multiple wars. But yeah, it's like the world's most beautiful conflict zone. Jharkhand, capital, Ranchi. Okay. It's kind of like uh, the sibling of Chhattisgarh. A lot of the people here kind of also have the same Maoist ideology. However, it also does have one of the holiest sites in Jainism. Well, how do you pronounce it? Shikh the Shikharji, known for having a lot of minerals that they mine, and uh, famous cricketer Dhoni came from here as well. Karnataka, yeah. capital Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore. The capital, Bengaluru, is kind of known as like the Silicon Valley of India. So many IT companies and startups are coming out in this city, and they have the lowest unemployment rate in all of India at less than 1%. Nice. Otherwise, they're known for having the Hampi ruins, and uh, they cool. speak Kannada, or uh, is that how you pronounce it? I was told it's pronounced Kannada. Kannada right. but some people have said Canada, like what is it? Kerala, <laughs> capital Tiruvananka. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Say that three times fast. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. This place is kind of famous for being known as the spot where Jesus' apostle Thomas kind of landed and spread the Christian gospel. Okay. And today uh, you see kind of like a lot of Catholics and Christians and they all kind of speak Malayalam. A little bit of a tongue twister. Say it with me. Malayalam. It's not Malayam. Malayam or Malayam. It's Malayalam. Backwater is a very famous place. And yeah, Kerala is kind of like the state that's like doing pretty well overall in a lot of things things like literacy and HDI and all that other stuff. All the other states are like, hmm, maybe we can kind of take pointers from Kerala. Madhya Pradesh, capital Bhopal. The heart of India. The history state with tons of religious and historical sites. You have the Bimbetka rock shelters. You have the uh, Kajuraho temples, which kind of depicts all those, uh, you know, Kama Sutra sexually explicit images going on. A lot of you have told me to mention the Bhopal gas tragedy that happened in 1984. And I was also told that the people here seem to be really big devotees of Ganesh. Maharashtra, capital Mumbai. This is the richest state and the second most populous, third largest in area. It's kind okay. of like the New York and Los Angeles of India. Wow. It's like the economic hub and the entertainment hub. Bollywood is over here. Tons of people flock over to pursue their dreams. I mean, aside from all that though, they do have a lot of like Marathi forts and like historical sites as well. But yeah, Maharashtra is kind of like the central Ooh. nucleus that everything kind of builds on off of and expands outwards from. So everyone wants to go, like, people from India, if there is one place that you would tell someone to kind of vacation, like one area, which would it be? <laughs> I'm probably gonna get a bunch of different answers from people from different areas, but oh well, you know. I guess it depends on what you wanna go see there, right? Anyways the central nucleus that everything kind of builds off of and expands outwards from. It pushes India forward. Manipur, capital Impal. This is one of the seven sister states. A lot of the people here, just like all the other seven sisters, have a little bit more of like an East Asian look to them. They're known for having their own distinct hill tribes. Five-time okay. world amateur boxing champion Mary Kom came from here. They're also known for having these cool floating islands. Floating what? islands and boxing women. Meghalaya, capital Shillong. This place is known as the abode of rain and they're kind of like the water people of India. These two villages get the most rain in all of India. They have really interesting matrilineal tribes and they have really cool foggy hills. But yeah, cool hill people with their own customs and uh, the water people. Mizoram, capital Aizal, the land of blue mountains. This is the most forested state in all of India at over 90%. Pretty eco-friendly. Wow. They even have eco-tours. It's kind of like the Costa Rica tours? of India. The people here are just really chill and they just kind of like sell their handicrafts at the market. All right, so that's the halfway point. Just very quickly nice. before we move on to the next one, just want to say thank you to Cetera, our sponsor for this video. Cetera is a really cool geography learning game that you can actually download on Android or iOS at this. You can even custom create your own game. And they actually made a geography now. This is like the most Christian state.
Check it out. Go to online.setera.com. Nagaland, capital Kohima. This is like the most Christian state of India, but they also still kind of retain their own indigenous tribal cultures and customs, famous for the Hornbill Festival. And it's funny because like, they're very westernized, but they know that the tourists come in and so they kind of have to like put on their traditional costumes and put on a yeah. show. But it's like, hey, eh, whatever, eh, whatever makes us money. Yeah, I, I, that, that's everywhere though, man. Like whatever brings the tourists in, you know, I'm sure the people who are doing these, you know, reenactments or whatever, they probably don't mind. They probably have fun with it and like the attention, right? So I, I think everyone kind of wins with that. To like put on the traditional costumes and put on a show, but it's like, hey, eh, whatever, eh, whatever makes us money. Odisha, formerly known <laughs> as Orissa, capital Bhubaneswar, known as the land of cyclones. It's also oh. known for being like the ISRO's launch site for their satellite program. Okay, I'm probably going to sound like an idiot right here. Hurricane and a cyclone are the same thing, right? It was just different parts of the world. They, call it, they just call it some different in different parts of the world, right? Pretty much right? Uh, I don't know. Cyclones. It's also known for being like the ISRO's launch site for their satellite programs. This is one of the three states that never broke up throughout all of Indian statehood history. It's kind of known as like the state that bridges the north and south. They speak the Oriya language. They have an amazing wetland and mangrove park where you can find like tigers and elephants. Probably the okay. most famous landmark being the Sun Temple of Konark. Punjab, capital Chandigarh, shared with Haryana. Keep in mind, this is only part of the larger Punjab. Punjab territory, which is also shared with Pakistan. A lot of you guys had stuff to say about Punjab. Overall, a lot of you said that Punjab is probably the most loved state in India, partially thanks to Bollywood. They got really good food, really nice people. They have the largest Sikh community in all of India. They also have the holiest site in Sikhism, the Golden Temple. That's and there's cool. a ton of forts and palaces like this one. Nice. Rajasthan, capital Jaipur. The land of Rajas or kings. kings. It's the largest state in area at 341 square kilometers. It is also one of the states that never broke up and there are just endless forts and palaces found in this state It has things like a camel fair Supposedly I was told they have like the best henna artists keep in mind food wise They huh. keep things very spicy and it is at about 75% of the population the most vegetarian state in India Vegetarian okay. kings in the sand Sikkim capital Gangtok now This is an interesting one because it kind of joined India in 1975 to kind of avoid the Chinese It used to be its own <laughs> kingdom and and these people are very similar to the people of Bhutan. They can kind of generally understand each other's languages. Lots of uh, Tibetan Buddhist type of culture going on here as well. And it is, as of right now, the most environmentally friendly state in all of India. It nice. is almost completely organic. As in, they don't wow. believe in using chemicals or pesticides in their agriculture. Very clean air. They love nature and they love, uh, they're just, it's, it's kind of like the Bhutan of India. Tamil Nadu, capital Chennai. Now, if you want real like South Dravidian Indian culture, you come here. This is like straight up the southern capital of India. The main language they speak, of course, is Tamil, which is completely unintelligible to Hindi. They have so many temples, including the largest functioning Hindu temple in the world. Technically, Angkor Wat is a bigger Hindu temple, but it's That's no longer cool. active, so it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told they are big fans. The temples, like, can tourists go to like kind of check it out? Is it kind of like a tour, kind of touristy kind of thing, or is it? You know, kind of just, you know, just religion wise, just kind of like, like a church basically, or, you know, you don't really go to kind of check it out. You kind of go there for religious purposes kind of thing Is that, you know, it's kind of curious temple, but it's no longer active. So it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told, well, I guess it's not active. So I guess that kind of answers it for me. Angkor Wat is a bigger Hindu temple, but it's no longer active, so it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told they are big fans of Rajnik Ant. Telangana, capital Hyderabad, the youngest state of India. They literally split up from Andhra Pradesh in 2014. I was told it's kind of like the whole, you know, Catalina Spain thing where they're like, hey, we're making a lot of money, but you guys are dragging us down, so we're going to kind of split off and make our own thing. And then Andhra Pradesh was like, no, you can't do that. And they're like, yes, we can. And we're going to take Hyderabad. They're like, no, you can't do that. And like, yes, we can make your own capital. <laughs> yeah, messy divorce. Anyway, they're also famous for Tollywood or Telugu Hollywood. And it's interesting because they still kind of retain. Okay, because like I, I I know India, I know Bollywood from India. I've done many trailers, you know, from Bollywood. I'm sure I've done some of the other ways, but like and then a lot of people would correct me in the 
comments or something to say there's more than just Bollywood okay Tollywood okay thank you so there's a bunch of different woods right Famous for Tollywood or Telugu Hollywood. And it's interesting because they still kind of retain a little bit of the Persian culture that was brought over from the Mughals and Nizams. You can find it in things like the painting and their shadow puppets. Tripura, capital Agartala. I was told, is this even India? It's like the state that very few people even know much about. It's like all sides of their state are surrounded by Bangladesh. So no shocker, they have a lot of Bangladeshi immigrants. Uh, apparently I was told they like to play horse polo. But yeah, uh, I think out of all the states, uh, uh, they are kind of like the biggest anomaly. It's just like the mystery state. People probably come here to hide out and avoid the authorities when they're on the loose. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> Uttar Pradesh, capital Lucknow. This is the Taj Mahal state. And it's kind Ooh. of like a, oh dang, where did that baby boom come from? You guys just like exploded in population in the past few years. And now it is the most populous state. It's also home to Varanasi, wow. one of the most famous cities in the world for Hinduism, Jains, and Buddhists. And uh, yeah, a lot of fertile land over here, lots of spices and agriculture happen in this state. Very key important player in all of India. You cannot have India without Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand, capital Dehradun. This place actually has some of the holiest sites in all of Hinduism. It has the Jim Corbett National Park, beautiful mountains. Again, I was told these people are super nice, very welcoming. And I was specifically told to tell you guys that Urvashi Ratala is from this state. West Bengal, capital Calcutta or Kolkata. They changed the spelling. This is the last state that never broke up in all of India, technically. If you consider the fact that it broke up from East Bengal, which became Bangladesh, but yeah. These people are kind of also known for having some of the best sweets in all of India. Mm. They're also known for having some of the best literature and academics. Some of the greatest minds from India, like this guy came from here. They're also known for being very strong devotees to Durga. Sweets and academics, West Bengal. Now we reach the Union Territories. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands, capital Port Blair. This place is known for being home to one of the last yep. uncontacted human yep. tribes on Earth, the Sentinelese. You are yeah, I definitely, I definitely know about this. Uh, they're like some guy went out there to kind of meet them and then got like slaughtered and they can't even go get his body back because, you know, they can't. <laughs> uh, so they kind of, these people are kind of cut off from the outside world and yeah, you just don't want to go there because then they'll probably kill you. And isn't there like a helicopter remains and stuff there? But I don't know. It's very interesting. Eh? home to one of the last uncontacted human tribes on earth yeah. the sentinelese you are not allowed to visit their island it's also home to india's only volcano chandigarh now this is interesting it's the capital of both punjab and haryana but it's also a union territory in itself basically this was a planned city that was built because they gave lahore to pakistan and it was kind of made to be like a model of affordable housing in india it's a, it's a new city dadra and nagar haveli and daman and diu there's the interesting thing Good Gujarat, like I mentioned, does not allow alcohol. Maharashtra does. So where do they meet in the middle? These union territories. These places are kind of known as like the places where both states can kind of join together and have a beer. And uh, Daman and Diu, I think it was also Portuguese, wasn't it? Yeah. Lakshadweep means a hundred islands. Basically, in a nutshell, the majority of people here are Muslim and they're very similar to the people of the Maldives. So you find a lot of atolls and a lot of people living on these narrow sandbanks and they have like an island culture. The capital territory of Delhi. Keep in mind, this is a separate entity from New Delhi. But yeah, uh, this is kind of basically where all the okay. politicians go and the worst drivers in India, I was supposedly told. And even though they are a territory, mm. They still have their own legislative assembly. It's it's weird. But yeah, busy people making laws, causing controversy for the rest of the country. And finally, Puducherry, capital Pondicherry. This is the French-speaking area of India. And here you can also find Oroville, the Whoa. hippie village, where all the people kind of came together and they wanted to make their own utopia. But then there was a little bit of controversy, but yeah, it's, yeah look into it. But yeah, <laughs> French-speaking Indians. And that is that! Once again, thank you to you guys, all the Indian younger peeps that helped me out with this video by giving information. I hope I got most of it right. But yeah, in a nutshell, India has so many different types of people groups and languages and cultures and traditions and customs. It's like you can't summarize it all in one video and obviously this one didn't even scratch the surface. But for what it's worth, beautiful country and I'm so glad and honored to have done this video. Thank you, stay yeah. cool, stay tuned. I need to start I'm sure there's probably some entertaining like conversations in the comments like when I do my Geography Now videos like I don't go to like geography now's you know comment section and I don't go there and but I, I kind of wish I 
I, I've been doing that because I think you'd probably be some cool conversations and debates down there, you know? So, uh, I'm sort of probably going to check that out after, uh, I, uh, close this out. But anyways, guys, uh, let me know what your thoughts are. If you're from there, let me know some other stuff that you maybe you hope that you pointed out and stuff like that. Uh, definitely. Oh, the controversy, I guess they're still like, I don't know. Like, I guess he was saying, he, he, he seemed like he didn't want to touch too much into some of the controversial areas, I guess, because then he then it sends him down like a rabbit hole and it's like, you know, then it would, you know, the video would go on and on and everything. So I definitely get where he's coming from. Like, because I'm sure like India is a giant country, like second biggest population in the world. Uh, you could probably have like in each one of those states probably have like an hour long episode like if you, if you really wanted to but anyways guys definitely interesting stuff uh you know like the religion you know culture is definitely scattered everywhere around down there which is really cool uh, and it's a lot to offer but anyways hit that like and subscribe button below i'd really appreciate it and I'll catch you guys in future videos on future divisions and i don't know what is next we got states of brazil explain woo uh hope you guys stick around for that but anyways peace catch you guys in future videos i am out of here you guys have a great night woo